I don't know about you guys, but 2021 felt like the expansion pack for 2020. Overall, just a pretty show year. While two of my most anticipated games, Horizon Forbidden West and the still to be titled Breath of the Wild sequel were delayed, 2021 still saw many fresh and exciting titles. And no, not Balan Wonderworld. Everything from platformers, action role-playing games, licensed properties, and shooters, there is a little something for everyone this year. Hi, I'm Frank, and in today's Frank's 5, I'll be naming 5 of my favorite games from 2021. For this list, I will only be including games released in the year 2021 that I personally played and actually enjoyed. This list is in no particular order and is completely 100% opinion based. I didn't get to play everything that I would have liked to in 2021, so I may have missed something good. Did your favorite game of 2021 not make this list? Let me know what I missed in the doobly-doo. Number five. Okay, let's get this one out of the way first. Normally, I wouldn't want to include a port or definitive edition in a top five game of the year list, but just hear me out. Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury on the surface appears to just be a port of the Wii U title. And while yes, the meat and potatoes is just that with a ton of quality of life changes that make the game, you know, not suck, I seriously hated 3D World on the Wii U. The Switch version just feels way better. But that's not why it got on this list. Oh no, it's the all new bite-sized adventure, Bowser's Fury. Nintendo took the 3D World engine and created something that feels incredibly fresh. An open world environment for Mario to roam around in, with plenty of cat shines to collect. While the open world element is something new to 3D Mario, the collect-a-thon running around collecting is incredibly reminiscent of Super Mario Odyssey. Oh, and Bowser's now a giant cat. What? That's right, Bowser got infected with some black sludge and transformed into this abomination. With the help of Bowser Jr., Mario sets to free Bowser from his curse and restore Lake Lap Cat, the game's setting, from its toxic plague. The storyline and Bowser Jr.'s inclusion make Bowser's Fury feel like a mini Super Mario Sunshine sequel. Bowser Jr. even carries around his magic paintbrush. Neat! Referencing one of Mario's less popular titles aside, Bowser's Fury brings a lot of new gameplay mechanics to the table. Mario's Giga Cat form, which is unlocked through the acquisition of Cat Shines, is something very new to the Mario franchise. And it's cool, I guess. Where are the shines? Where are the shines? These sections see a giant Mario vs. Bowser style fight a la Godzilla vs. King Kong. Now that I think about it, I almost feel like Donkey Kong should have been the game's final boss. These boss battles feel very different from anything the Mario franchise has seen before. It's a nice blend of traditional Mario gameplay, a spicy twist, and a much more polished and reformed control scheme. The $60 price tag is hard to justify for just Bowser's Fury, but if it ever ends up a standalone eShop title, or is clearance down quite a bit, I would say it's worth picking up. I'm a sucker for a new Mario game. Leave me alone. Number 4! During 2020's PlayStation Future Gaming event, Ember Lab unveiled their first ever game, Kena Bridge of Spirits. Having a background in creating animated commercials and shorts, Ember Lab's open world adventure game showcased incredibly well and definitely piqued my interest. Being a big fan of the games it was <clears throat> influenced by, I knew this game was right up my alley. Players take control of Kena, a novice spirit god on a journey to free the land of its corruption. Early on, a mysterious masked spirit reveals himself to be the cause for chaos, releasing corruption, decay, and monsters into the world. Upon meeting the spirits of two children, Benny and Saya, Kana pledges to restore peace. Isn't that nice? If I saw that spirit guy, I'd be like, nope, nope, this, I'm out. Kana Bridge of Spirit controls very similarly to Breath of the Wild or Horizon Zero Dawn, but definitely deviates in a way that makes it feel very fresh and original. Kana carries around a staff, which acts as an incredibly versatile melee weapon. With it, she can perform quick attacks, as well as stronger, more time-consuming moves. While the inspiration taken from larger open-world games is apparent, so are Kana Bridge of Spirit's platforming roots. Her ability to run and jump is reminiscent to that of early Nintendo 64 platformers. Kana will need this mobility to obtain the various collectibles spread throughout the game. Kana Bridge of Spirit further differentiates itself from other similarly structured games with the use of Rot these small, animal-like creatures that act as a companion in both combat and exploration. I don't dislike them, but I also don't like them. What I do dislike is the fact that most collectibles spread across the game only unlock character skins. For the rot. I get it, some people may want to dress up their little critters. I personally don't. 
Remember how I said the developer Ember Lab had previous history in animation? It definitely shows. The environments are incredibly dynamic, constantly changing from bright and cheery to dark and gloomy it really takes advantage of the PlayStation 5's graphical capabilities. The art style has a very DreamWorks-inspired aesthetic, and the cutscenes play out like a charming little clip it from an animated movie. Fans of the open-world genre should not sleep on this milestone in indie games. Ember Labs proved that indie developers are fully capable of AAA quality releases. Number 3! Back in the Xbox 360 era, I was fairly heavily into Left 4 Dead. I spent hours and hours teaming up with buddies online taking down hordes of infected. The studio responsible for Left 4 Dead, no, the one with the turtle, Turtle Rock, has had a bit of a rough patch since its departure from Valve. Steamy dukes like Evolve, which were meant to succeed the beloved Left 4 Dead franchise, not only failed to capture the hearts of the fans, but also failed to find footing of its own. Thankfully, Turtle Rock has learned from their mistakes and released a true spiritual successor to Left 4 Dead, cheekily titled Back for Blood. While Back for Blood is completely unrelated to Left 4 Dead on a story front, gameplay, mechanics, and team coordination will hit that Left 4 Dead urge like a yellow bumblebee baseball bat. The swarms of zombies, referred to as ridden in-game, are just as intimidating as you'd remember and instill the same fun and fear the previous franchise was known for. Similarities to Left 4 Dead aside, Back 4 Blood brings a lot of new elements that help differentiate itself from its predecessor. Unlike Left 4 Dead, the game features a storyline, which follows our ragtag team of hunters, known as the Cleaners, on a story of survival. The included story isn't anything monumental, but it does give an explanation for why the players are in a specific area and actually make the map progression feel important. Another entirely new mechanic Back 4 Blood introduces to the genre is its deck building system. Initially, I was incredibly skeptical of them adding deck building into Back 4 Blood. And yeah, cards are going to ruin the game! Ha! I was wrong. They quickly grew on me and became a much welcomed addition. While playing online matches, players will earn supply points, which can be cashed out for new cards at the supply lines. Acquired cards can then be formed into decks of 15 or less. This encourages players to experiment with different playstyles, while also opening up the possibility to create decks for specific character builds. To me, Back 4 Blood just feels like a really jam-packed Left 4 Dead. Whether you were into Left 4 Dead back in the day, or want to try a squad shooter for the first time, it's pretty much Left 4 Dead without the brand, and I'm perfectly okay with that. It's not a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination, but it's a lot of fun and that's all we can really ask for in a video game. By the way, I'm not reviewing it. Sorry, Jay. Number 2! Guardians of the Galaxy literally just came out of nowhere. It was announced and released without much being known about it at all. This initially drew up a red flag to me, as that's typically a deceptive marketing move done to slowly slip out an unpolished herd. Thankfully, when Eidos Montreal released the title back in October of 2021, fans were at ease. Not only was the game not a total disaster, but actually a lot of fun. Guardians of the Galaxy is composed of the underdog heroes fans of the franchise know and love, although this iteration is completely standalone to the movies, comics, and other adaptations. While this was initially off-putting, as the storyline progresses, the attachment for each of the Guardians grows. We all have our favorites. Growing attached to the Guardians is important, as huge portions of the game contain cutscenes and heavy dialogue sequences. And by that I mean someone's likely talking all the f***ing time. They just don't shut up. Thankfully, the team's constant bickering is part of the experience and part of what makes it feel authentic to the Guardians of the Galaxy franchise. When not coercing with comrades, players take the reins of Peter Quill, better known as Star-Lord. Guardians of the Galaxy is a third-person action-adventure title, with a few personal touches that make it feel unique. While players control Star-Lord directly, they can also command the other Guardians into performing various attacks. When exploring around galaxies, the other Guardians can perform environmental abilities which will grant Star-Lord access to specific areas. While in combat, they can perform special attacks. Using these in conjunction with Star-Lord's blasters is crucial to effectively taking out waves of enemies. Everything from the storyline, voice acting, visuals, and combat make Guardians of the Galaxy one of the most fun games I've played in 2021. Pre-existing fans of the franchise, or those just looking for something new, should definitely give Guardians of the Galaxy a try. I could go on and on and on about the game, but I already did a video review, diving deep into the title. Make sure to go check that video out, as I worked really hard on it. Number 1! 
I've been playing the Ratchet and Clank series since I was a kid. It was one of those franchises that made me break away from my Nintendo exclusivity deal and get my PlayStation 2 back in the day. With platforming, shooting, and innuendos up the arsenal, what wasn't there to love? Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is the latest entry in the long-running series and was the first to be released since Sony's acquisition of Insomniac Games. This also being the first title on the franchise to release under the PlayStation Studios umbrella insinuated to me that it would likely be the biggest title yet. While Rift Apart isn't necessarily an open world game, all of the areas are vast and filled to the brim with collectibles. Controlling Ratchet has truly never felt better. With his movement being tweaked and refined, this is the smoothest controlling Ratchet and Clank title to date. Early on in the journey, Ratchet's given a new pair of boots which make navigating around the exotic locations a blast. The increased power of the PlayStation 5 also enhances the experience. The series has always had a Pixar-esque appearance, but with a stunning 4K resolution and ray tracing capabilities, Insomniac Games has created something that actually outshines its inspiration. Additionally, the DualSense controller's advanced rumble capabilities also help enhance the immersion. Each weapon truly feels unique and different. With a very endearing storyline, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart explores many heavy topics, such as betrayal, trust, and of course, multiple dimensions. Ratchet and Clank is in my opinion the best truly PlayStation 5 exclusive title to date. I'd say everyone should pick it up, but Sony's lack of PlayStation 5 availability really put a ratchet in my plan. Get it? Ratchet? But seriously, if you own a PS5, it's your duty as a console owner to play this game. Or I'll hit you with a wrench. So there you have it, those were my top 5 games of 2021. Last year surprisingly saw a lot of releases, so I'm likely to have missed your favorite. Let me know what I missed in the comments section below. Also please do me a solid and leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Your feedback is greatly appreciated. Till next time, peace.